Hi, it's Ian here. Welcome to another 5-Minute Marketing Tip. In this week's tip, I'm going to talk about the shock and awe technique for marketing, and in particular, five situations where you can use shock and awe particularly well. I'll see you after the break. Hi, welcome back. The shock and awe technique is a method for making a huge impact on a very small number of targeted ideal clients. I first heard about it, I think, in a Dan Kennedy book where he talked about whenever he would be contacted by someone who wanted a, a sales meeting essentially with them, so discussing potentially working together, rather than just him rocking up to the sales meeting and not being certain what that potential client's perception of him was before the sales meeting, so they may know that he's a world-famous author and is a real expert in various things. On the other hand, they might just have been given his name or found him randomly. So what he did instead, he always used to send out what he called a shock and awe pack, which was kind of a big cardboard box filled with a bunch of his books, CDs, audios, reports, etc., so that um, the prospect always got that before the meeting. If they opened it and they looked at that, even if they skimmed through the books, um, it really did create shock and awe where all of a sudden, if they didn't know it before, they realized he really knew his stuff. He was a leading expert in the field. So it created an entirely different perception in that sales meeting. Um, so people were already coming to the meeting thinking, this is a guy I want to work with. So that's the first use of the shock and awe meeting. And it's in to prepare for sales meetings. I can't spell sales. Now, the second use of shock and awe that um, I particularly like to use is for referrals. So it's great to get a referral. Someone you know um, will recommend you to someone else and they'll pass your name on, etc. And then maybe they'll contact you and say, say hey, and I've recommended you to so-and-so. You should get in touch. So it's great that you've been recommended to someone else. But the problem is in terms of where you take it from there. Because the minute you then phone up someone and say, hey, would you, you know, so-and-so said they've recommended me to you, or so-and-so's um, said they, they, you know, that you, 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 you may be a good person for me to speak to. The minute you get in touch and kind of say that on the phone or over email, and, you know, maybe we should get together and talk about how we could work together. You know, if the person at the other end of the phone or email is anything like me or most people, you know, there's a horrible feeling they get in the pit of their stomach where 80% of the time they're not ready to buy anything. So they're thinking, oh, last thing I want is a sales meeting, but I, I don't want to be impolite. Um, and even if they are looking for something, it all of a sudden puts you in the role of a salesperson. Instead of being, you know, a really trusted friend and ally that someone's introduced, if you have to go knocking on their door to get that meeting, all of a sudden it's changed the dynamic of the relationship. So for referrals, you can use shock and awe again, because what you do is you send your shock and awe pack. So that could be any books you've written, any reports you've written. So if you've got a lead magnet, print it out and bind it. Put some of your stuff onto CD, on audio, collect together some videos, put those on DVD, etc. You're always better sending these shock and awe things through the post. We're using a different medium. Everybody uses email. Obviously, I like email because I wrote a book on email marketing, but... Um, you want to break that frame. You want to do something different to everyone else. So send it through the post, for example, or send them a bunch of video um, rather than just text emails. Um, that will create a whole different impression. Before, So instead of you contacting them saying, hey, would you like to get, get together and talk about how I could help you? You can contact them and say, hey, you know, so-and-so said they recommended me to you thought you might find this useful. Send them your book, send them your audio, send them your video. And all of a sudden, you're A, doing something good for them rather than asking them for a sales meeting. B, impressing the heck out of them if your material is really good. Changes the dynamic, really sets you up for a great referral. Third use of shock and awe is something called the overboarding technique. Now, this uh, technique was introduced to me, I think created by uh, James Welsh of Sales Coach World. Um, I'll put a link to where James describes the overboarding technique himself um, just below the video. But basically, it's the use of shock and awe type techniques after you've had a sales meeting. So let's say you had a sales meeting with someone who turns out could be a really brilliant client for you, could be worth an absolute fortune, for example, but it's quite competitive. There are other people in there. So what you do is you go overboard to win the sale. You use some of the shock and awe techniques to follow up after the sales meeting and really impress the heck out of them so that you're the person they focus on and you're the person who wins the sale. Fourth um, time where I might use the shock and awe techniques are for new clients. 
So with new clients, as you know, um, there's always a danger of people getting that kind of buyer's remorse. They've paid a bunch of money to you. Um, now they think, oh, really, have I made the right decision? So you want to make a really great impression. So a simple thing I do with new members of Momentum Club, my membership program, is I create a personalized video and send that to them um, via email. Now, I can pretty much guarantee they've never, ever before had a personalized video welcoming them to a product or a program, showing them how to get the most from it from anyone else. No one does it but me, unless they're watching this video. Um, so again, it's, it's an example of shock and awe. If it's a higher price, price program or whatever, you could maybe send them something through the post, send them a whole bunch of DVDs with your material on or whatever it might be. Just think of some way of creating a really great first impression with new clients or customers. And the final one you can look at is, are kind of unexpected gifts for existing customers and clients. So, you know, one of the things we overlook time and time again is doing great things for our existing customers rather than taking them for granted and making sure they stay great customers forever. So on the anniversary of when they became a customer or a client, send them some kind of gift. Now, again, I'd always prefer to send gifts that are, you know, your book, your CD, stuff like that, examples of your work. So you're not only going to create a good impression because you've sent them something nice, but also you're going to continue to impress them about how much you know and how capable you are and uh, how great it is and uh, to work with you. Um, but you can send them, you know, send them some chocolate through the post as well. That's going to do no harm. But always try and think of things, your own intellectual property, you can send them. And again, the more you can send through the post, the more you can send via video, change the mode of your communication from the normal email or, email or phone call or just logging into a website. Do something different. Make a great impression. Use the shock and awe technique. It will really pay off. See you again soon.